At about 2.59 yesterday, while traveling east on Masonic Boulevard near Bunnert between Shaner and Hayes, uh, for the locals here, Masonic is 13 and a half mile road. Uh, while traveling eastbound, the driver experienced some dizziness uh, and followed our protocol, as I mentioned, and notified the home base. Fortunately, traffic was light. And as the bus was slowing down, it started to veer into what would have been oncoming traffic. And this caught the attention of Dylan, who was about five rows or so back of the bus. And he stood up and he assessed the situation and eventually saw that the driver had passed out. And in my 35 plus years of education, um, this was an extraordinary act of courage and maturity on his part. He jumped up from his seat, threw his backpack down, ran to the front of the bus, grabbed the steering wheel, and brought the bus to a stop in the middle of the road. And you would think in the middle of this panic, you would just jump on the brake. He had the wherewithal to push it slowly, likely in anticipation that the bus was full of passengers. So um, despite the justifiable panic on the bus, you can imagine this is probably a 66 passenger bus and it was full at the time. Um, there was quite a lot of panic and somehow he remained calm until two good Samaritans came to the bus. One was a guy walking down the street and another was a woman who was two cars behind the bus. And the gentleman boarded the bus and assisted uh, Dylan with the driver, while the other helped the students exit the bus from the rear. And she shared with us that she decided to do that in part so the students didn't have to pass by the driver who was in some serious distress, as well as eventually not get in the way of the police or fire who had arrived on the scene literally in three to four minutes. Now, I want to take a minute for a moment and just recognize the Warren Police and Fire Department for their incredible response. Uh, we continue to benefit from their service to our schools. And uh, when we call, they come and they come in a hurry. And the same goes for our partners in Sterling Heights and Troy. But on this particular situation, they were there on scene within three or four minutes uh, to provide aid to the driver <clears throat> and to help coordinate with the students. There was no damage to the bus or any property as Dylan, as I mentioned, uh, safely steered it to a halt. And as the driver was receiving aid, according to our protocols, our crisis team uh, began the process of notifying the parents who were on the bus, of the kids who were on the bus. Because uh, as you know, just about every middle school kid has a cell phone and they likely got to their parents before we did. But we found it, as we always do, uh, to keep parents informed of what's going on. Um, so as we notified the parents, um, a short time later, we made the decision, uh, based on the recommendation of Carter Middle School principal, to do a second call to parents that night of the same students on the bus to let them know we're coordinating a counseling session for the following day, which would have been this morning. And the principal reports to me that um, the uh, students came in, uh, administrators and counselors were available, and they all reportedly seemed to be doing well. As I mentioned, we formally uh, plan to recognize Dylan with a commendation at a future meeting of the board. And what I'd like to do at this point is show you the video. Um, and I'll, I'll point out to you, the video doesn't have much audio to it until the very end, which demonstrates uh, Dylan's extraordinary courage and really just really smart, quick thinking on his feet. Um, and uh, he made a huge difference this day. So we'll play this video. It's about a minute long. And then um, I'll point out a couple of more things and then take some questions.
So join me in a round of applause for this young man. <clears throat> like all of us, I've had an opportunity to process this and think through this. I met with the family before uh, today's press conference. And all things considered, I'm especially thankful for the Good Samaritans in our community who assisted us until the police arrived. And I'm proud to lead our team of people who work here uh, in this district uh, as their commitment to our continued crisis preparedness helped navigate this incident, uh, frankly, to a T. Uh, I, I don't know that it could have gone any better. Uh, and when you have an anchor like Dylan taking care of business on the bus, um, it really and truly uh, was a good day for us. Above all, I want to take a moment and recognize that much credit, much credit goes to our Board of Education, who has extraordinarily high expectations for me and all who serve our children here. You may or may not be aware of this, but my own children attended school here. Uh, they're grown up and gone now, but um, I take great pride in serving this community, um, and we are better because of the expectations of the Board substantially. And finally, in no uncertain terms, I am so proud of Dylan as he made all the difference in this crisis and represents the very best of our students here in Warm Saudi Schools. And on that note, I'll take questions. Yes, sir. None whatsoever. In fact, in order to drive a bus in Michigan, you have to pass a Department of Transportation medical exam, um, which uh, she had done, which is part of the criteria uh, we follow in order to employ a bus driver. Yeah, we're actually we're actually in the middle of that. Um, uh, a lot of things will come into play. Uh, m much of it has to do with our crisis response after the fact um, because um, uh, I hate to use the term fluke, but um, we, we put a lot of drivers on the road. I've been here 16 years, and I've never experienced anything remotely like this. So thank you. Can you share her age and how long she's been driving with the district? Uh, her, I do not have her age. She is a new driver, though. Uh, she's been with us. Uh, since last July. Okay. Yep, she hired in in July. Uh, you just saw the video again. Can you just kind of take me through your reaction to seeing it again and how did it make you feel that Dylan uh, was there? Uh, well, as I said, I'm extraordinarily proud. You, you know, as you process events like this, you start to, we do this all the time in crisis. Uh, anytime we have a crisis in the district, whether it's a small one or a big one like this, we take an opportunity to review how we did, sort of a lesson learned, because we're focused on continuous improvement uh, in crisis response. In this case, um, I, I, my, my thoughts have gone to the driver had the, the wherewithal to notify the base, according to our protocol, she wasn't feeling well and was preparing to stop. That is, that's right out of the playbook. Unfortunately, she didn't get to stop the bus. Fortunately, from the looks of it, it seems like she took her foot off the pedal because if you watch the grass at the top of the video, it starts to slow down, but it's still moving by the time Dylan arrived at the steering wheel. Um, that jumped out at me, and the um, I don't even like to think about this, but thank God it was not an elementary school bus, right? Um, I don't like to think about that, but uh, this is... Uh, this is a good day for us with regard to that. So that's how I've processed it. And um, more importantly, I couldn't be prouder of all the kids. They followed the directions. They went out the emergency uh, exit, and they all gathered on the, the, lawn, the lawn and the boulevard there on the grass. So. Sure. Do you know what state that crash was in? 
Oh, Lord, in the state of Michigan? Okay. Sure. And, yeah, you, you know, you raise a good point that I think is worth noting. Um, many people might not know this, but when you see a bus on the road, um, they all have three black stripes on them. And in between the first and second stripe is, a stripe is typically the name of the district. And what you may not know is the middle stripe is actually where the students are seated. They, they are very high up in the bus, which minimizes any potential if they're hit broadside or, because uh, we've had our uh, instances where a bus is in an accident with a car and that, and um, it, for us, 10 out of 10 times, um, the, the bus sustains the damage far less than the car, um, and the, they're, they're built like tanks. This, the, the weight of them, and where the center of gravity is. But just if you, next time you see a bus, just know that middle stripe is, that's how high the kids are. And when you compare that to someone in a regular motor vehicle getting hit broadside, they're down, you know, down low. So um, that's, uh, it's important context. Thank you. Question for Mr. and Ms. Mrs. Reed, if you wouldn't mind just sharing your feelings. Number one, thank you to Dylan for what you did. Congratulations on, on being here. seeing that video and also if you could come to the podium and also share maybe where Dylan may have learned what to do in that situation. <laughs> How did that happen? Should I say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, first off, we are very, very proud. I mean, this is overwhelming for all of us. That This is national at this point. I've noticed um, lots of calls, lots of messages we're getting. Uh, so, but if it, thank you. Yes, Dylan, his, his really been a great guy this year. He has yeah. come a long way. He's <clears throat> surprised us with great grades and with his performances at school, with friends, with peers. And to do something like this just fills my heart. It makes my heart skip a beat to even watch that video. Again, this is the second time because yeah. we got to see it before you guys, but I'm just, I can't even um, express how much um, what's the word? Um, proudness? You know, yeah. like I'm extremely proud of him. It does. This should. It's kind of like why us, you know. But it's a. It's an honor. I mean, we got a little hero. Yeah. So I love it. To do what he did. Uh, he's been on my lap, driving country roads, pulling in driveways since about four years old. Um, driving the golf cart around the camp. Driving the side by side with me in the passenger seat, about nine. Uh, golf carts and just he's a good driver. I, <laughs> I don't know if I should say it out loud, but he can he could probably drive one of the cars out of here and be okay. I <laughs> promise you that. He, so um, he's very attentive to his surroundings. And we asked him. I asked him, Dylan, how did you know what to do? How did you know how to drive that bus? And he said, I watch her do it every day. Yeah. So he pays very close attention to everybody. He unfortunately does not have a cell phone. Um, we're very anti-technology in our house for the most part, so I think that probably helped a lot. Um, but he's... To his credit, he told yeah. the children to call 911. Yes. Yes. Too. It wasn't yes. just stopping the car. Yes. Yes. So it's like he planned it all out. Yeah. Can, you, can you share who's reached out to you as far as you said overseas? Or, I mean, uh, not overseas. Know. I've had... Uh, Fox, all the all the news channels, a um, couple people out of state, 9:50 a.m. radio. Uh, it's it just gets more and more every hour. So, trying to look at them and kind of see what I can do. But right, that's why we're not going to allow him to comment today. It's overwhelming. It's, it's overwhelming for him. He's he, yes. <laughs> I was pre-cooking early dinner. And I heard all, we live like two blocks from there. I heard all the sirens, and I'm like, oh, and it's 3.10. Usually he's walking in the door from the bus stop. And then my wife I, called me. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was sitting out front of the house waiting for Dylan to come home from the bus, and the bus dropped the kids off, and I saw a group of kids run to the park. So I thought that was odd, and I took a ride up the road to see what was going on at the park because I didn't see Dylan. And I saw the intersection and the buses, and I 
freaked out. So then I, I pulled into the park and called him to see if the school had notified him. And as we were having a conversation, he was getting a phone call. Yeah, the police officer called me, and my first response was, what the heck did he do? <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 this is a good call. I'm like, oh. He goes, your son's a hero. So oh, it's a... He's always had an interest in being a police officer. Professional hockey player. Yeah, loves hockey. He's a hockey nut. Can now, yeah, firefighter. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I know your name is Steve. I don't know your wife's name. I'm sorry. I read up. I read it. Can you spell that, please? I R E T A. Thank you. How about the little girl? Is there any kind of That's his little sister, Raylin. How do you spell that? R A E L Y N. How do you spell that? S T E V E Steve. Are you doing anything to celebrate after this? Uh, yeah, we're trying. We're probably gonna hit up Modern Cone. We went to Leeson's <laughs> yesterday and got an ice cream. Um, might go up to our camper and have a, a weekend with them. Maybe even a dad and Sunday. Is this um, worth a steak dinner, though? Yes, oh, yeah. yes, it is. Detroit Fish House or company is probably in our near future. No so. Yeah, well, if he does them, you know. <laughs> so, uh, he's he's quiet. He's a pretty quiet kid. He's got he's got a few friends. He's not really a go out and conquer the world as far as friends. You know, he's got a few select friends at home. Um, a couple live around the block. Uh, sticks to himself. Average kid at home. He likes watching YouTube videos and. Plays basketball. He throws his rollerblades on instantly when he gets home. And he's usually out in the middle of the street with his beat up net and just shooting pucks at it. Yeah, I know that you've addressed this already, but um, aside from him being young, what do you think spurred him to get into it? Because other kids are probably looking, thinking, oh, that's the end of the world. This young man is. I, we, we still don't know. The grace of God. Grace of God, just raising a good kid. I. He, you know, I'm always trying to spill your heart, you know. So I, we still don't know. I don't know if I'll ever know but what made him jump into action like that. But very, very, extremely proud of him. Yes, we are very proud of him. Thanks, Kathy. Pardon me? Your profession? I'm a health and safety supervisor. And I'm a community nurse. So... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for sure. Um, I, we could certainly find out because there's obviously a record. But um, I, I, I would guess that it came from the bus, just given how immediate it was. Right. In fact, uh, lots of kids have their cell phones on in the bus, and so my, my guess would be it was from the bus, um, not and sure. not not exactly sure. Yeah. Nope, uh, it was slowing down. Um, I, Masonic in that area is only 25 miles an hour, 30 maybe. Um, so it was um, it was beginning to slow down. Um, so I, I don't know for sure, but it was certainly not the speed limit. And who brought this up? Do you have any idea how much this thing weighed? The bus? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to guess... And this is without passengers, probably 6,000 pounds, three tons. But the, um, the kids that, that carted, that's where you worked, right? Carted? Yep. Did they do anything to me? No. What was their reaction? Um, well, the principal reported that Dylan was certainly the most popular kid in the school today, <laughs> uh, chanting his name and appreciative. And, you know, you raise a good point, Mr. Hotz. As the kids process this, and I, I talked to – uh, his parents earlier about this. As you process this over time, this is going to get more and more special. Because right now there's a lot of adrenaline uh, in response to what happened. But over time, we're really going to come to appreciate how extraordinary this was. As you pointed out, that whole fight or flight or flee or freeze uh, for him to stand up, assess the situation, and make his way to the front of the bus uh, and do what he did, that, that is extraordinary. 
and uh, it, it will only grow in intensity over time. I don't believe so. Okay. The driver's been in the hospital, remains there. So, uh, yeah. Um, I think Mr. Reeves offered to send her flowers. Was that yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I can't get her name. It belongs to <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Good question. Um, I, I think so, because there are points... Um, uh, where it seems like she's in and out of consciousness, but I don't know that for certain. Um, uh, she may she may very well know now, um, having been in the hospital and staying in touch with our transportation department. <clears throat> and you mentioned that the date of the presentation is October. Yep, I'm gonna. Not yet. I need to review with the board, and uh, it'll be at a future meeting here, um, and uh, and we'll certainly uh, uh, issue a commendation. Um, and I've gotten, <clears throat> on a side note, I've gotten calls from area leaders wanting to recognize him also already. Um, in fact, they, this one was completely random. A uh, surgeon at Beaumont Hospital Corwell uh, sent me a letter addressed to Dylan and asked me to pay it forward to him. And um, it was just simply a recognition of, uh, of his heroics. Uh, and this particular surgeon is a retired uh, major uh, from the Army, uh, Army Corps surgeon. And he, uh, he uh, paid a letter forward to me, which I provided to uh, Dylan and his family. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your time. And one more time, how about a hand for Dylan and his efforts? <laughs>